Ever wondered how the new LMDH cars in AMS2 compare to those in iRacing? Well, let's find out as we take the Porsche 963 GTP around a lap of two circuits on the WEC calendar. First at Circuit de la South and then at Inter Lagos. As we do, keep these caveats in mind. I'm driving both cars with their stock settings. I'm sure both can be improved with setup work, but this provides a sense of how the cars handle out of the box, which is how I imagine many, many sim racers will experience them. Second, everyone has different preferences when it comes to driving feel. Mine are almost certainly shaped by having spent many more hours in iRacing over the last 12 months, and it's worth acknowledging that right out front as it will almost certainly be a factor in how I experience both cars. Right, first, what do both cars have in common? Well, let's be clear, they're both highly enjoyable to drive. The car models and sounds are both good, and at least at a track like Le Mans, they're surprisingly easy to hop into and drive, albeit I'm absolutely not at the limit of what the car could achieve. Providing you can adjust to the mind-boggling speeds, the Porsche absolutely monsters the majority of this circuit, with very little trouble in both titles. The downforce available means the car really comes alive through the high and medium speed corners, and the final sector at Le Mans is a particular joy as you snake right and left, maximising corner speed while holding to the racing line. However, as you'd expect, each interpretation of the car also reflects the core physics models of the sims therein, and that's where some of the differences become apparent. In iRacing, to me, the car generally feels more planted, less prone to wheel spin and sliding. The front end in iRacing is pointier, which I generally prefer in every car I race. I major on formula cars, and I find it's easier to get the nose of the car into corners. I also feel like you can control the car into corners with the brake a little more easily in iRacing. In AMS2, I struggle to get the same feeling under braking more generally. It just feels a little bit less nuanced and precise. On the flip side, in iRacing, as with many other cars on the sim, the brakes can be quite peaky. You have to be extra careful not to lock them. Overall, the Porsche 963 GTP feels more responsive to me on iRacing, but you do have to be more patient when you drive it. You can't wring the neck of the car without either understeering or being pitched into a spin, and in that sense, out of the box at least, it is a more challenging experience. I've only scratched the surface on the brake and hybrid settings that the iRacing car offers, but it's seemingly very authentic. At the time of recording, the hybrid system is not yet implemented fully in AMS2, but the developers have made it clear that it will be. Now, I mentioned that the Porsche 963 GDP demolishes the Le Mans circuit, but what about a more technical track on the WEC calendar, like Inter Lagos? I expected both interpretations of the Porsche to leave me struggling for grip in the slow and technical sectors, but actually, that wasn't the case. Now again, setups will be crucial here, and I'm just running the stock settings on a well rubbered in track. But even in AMS2, which tends towards more oversteer in its handling characteristics, my main challenge was understeer, getting these big cars through the tight and twisty stuff without running wide on entry or exit. As a side note, Super Formula is much more fun here, in my opinion, as you can dance the cars through the corners. Here, the Porsche just felt a bit clumsy. In the head-to-head, -head, I'd have to say it was more instantly enjoyable to run this combo in AMS2. It was certainly more straightforward to hook up a lap here, and the car felt more balanced and less slidey than I thought it would. And really, for me, that's the big point here. We now have two really enjoyable interpretations of LMDH cars to race, which between iRacing and AMS2 provide the opportunities for all kinds of cool sim racing experiences, whether massive online races or accessible recreations of endurance races offline. And speaking of endurance racing, you can see just how much I'm enjoying the full endurance pack DLC for AMS2 in the video that's on screen now, and I'll see you on the next one.